gap, it would uh, say something to the effect of neighborhood parks funding, utilizing a racial and economic equity criteria. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, so after the word gap, it would be a different. Uh, would achieve a shared goal of closing a neighborhood parks funding gap, utilizing a racial and economic equity criteria in a manner that is consistent. That, that would be the way that it reads the same for both sections, and I guess the question is for Councilor Arcano is, would, would that meet your intent? Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair. I have two thoughts on that. Um, first, um, you know, it's it's been, the community has been working on some of these racial equity and, and parks funding issues for many years. So there's been a lot of public knowledge and information about the lack of investment in racially concentrated areas of poverty that have um, given fruition to good and healthy parks. There, I, there's, there's been questions about how that money has been um, allocated in, into certain parks and then not put into, into good use or hasn't produced the results that the community wants to see. And so I'm assuming what you're saying is that there's no consultant verified research project that points out the disparities that the rest of us are clearly aware of. I can understand that because perhaps that study doesn't exist. Um, and, and what I'm basing my information on is um, on, the, on the work that I've done with Hope Community as an employee there. Um, I worked there for uh, almost a year um, back in, I forget what year, 2010 perhaps, and, um, and got to know the work of, of the Parks and Power campaign and, and um, saw the work that was happening uh, on PV Park. And of course now as a council member hearing from my residents uh, around the lack of um, capital improvements at Powderhorn Park and Cedarfield Park and some of these other um, corporate parks, some of these other parks that are um, again uh, located within racially concentrated areas of the city. So I want to acknowledge that as the place of truth where I'm coming from where I don't necessarily need a, um, a highly paid consultant study to understand where um, the community needs are coming from. But I will also say that um, I appreciate the point you're bringing up now and I would be happy to take that um, change to codify this and uh, make it align to the rest of the language that we have in this ordinance. So that, that change would be fine. Okay. No. So my understanding is, Hold Councilman Arcano, you would like to move a, a little bit different uh, amendment forward, which uses uh, in line two of the purpose, you would be adding after the words shared goal of closing a neighborhood parks funding gap, you would be adding the words utilizing a racial and economic equity criteria. And then you would um, add that same phrase in the last line, which refers to the streets funding portion of this. So after the words funding gap would be inserted utilizing a racial and economic equity criteria. Yep. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So that is before us. Discussion on that uh, motion? Not seeing any. All in approval, please say aye. 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 Opposed? And that item is approved. We're back to our original list of council members. Council member Yang. Uh, thank you, Madam Vice President. I just wanted to get a clarification on the definition of neighborhood park system. Um, in subsection one, um, there are two things. One is uh, those parks that are owned, operated, and maintained, and then the next one is or owned and maintained. I mean, is there a difference, and can we make it simpler? Can I just add to Councilmember Gangs? I, I, I kind of like to know what you perceive is in and what is out based on this, so just we are... Right really crystal clear on that. Thank, thank you, uh, Chair Glidden and Council Member Yang. So the definition is our owned, operated, and maintained. So those are all the parks that we actually own, operate on a daily basis, as well as maintain. The or is the parks that we own, don't operate, but maintain. So own and maintain. So those are like Phelps Recreation Center, Brian Clow Recreation Center that we own and maintain, but do not operate. So that is why there's a very distinct difference between those two and why both of those need to be in there. Okay. 
Council Member Yang, uh, Chair Glidden, another old example would have been the North Commons pool, which we had leased to the YMC to operate, but we are operating now our, on our own. And there are no other parks are, that fall in that example? No, there are no others. Uh, Council Member Fry. Thank you, Madam Vice President. I have a very minor, but I believe significant amendment uh, that reflects the desire, I believe, of both the council and the park board in this instance. Uh, and I have vetted it with the attorney. Um, and it, all it really adds is adding a comma. Um, and first I'll, I'll read what I wanna do and then I'll explain why. Uh, so this is in, again, in, uh, so you are in the definition section? I'm in the section. definition sections under neighborhood park system. Okay. Correct. Thank you, Madam Vice President. So it should read, it begins, neighborhood park system means those parks that, one, uh, are owned, uh, comma, operated and maintained. Now what I'd like to do there is just add a comma. So are owned, operated, and maintained, comma, or owned, delete comma, and maintained by the MPRB. So the way it presently reads is operated and main for is, is our owned, operated, maintained, or owned, comma. And that implies that you can either own it independently um, of the operation and maintenance, which is not the case and would actually include the commons within that definition. So again, all I'm doing, my, my motion, and I move to um, add a comma after the word maintained in the first line. Uh, and delete the comma after own, owned in the second line. And I just want to ask, uh, maybe this is a question for the city attorney as well as for you, and then I'll ask the park board to comment after we hear a little bit more about this. What do you, do you think this is just a more clear uh, way to reflect the intent we've already discussed, or is there uh, another intention from those uh, gr grammatical changes? Madam Vice President, it's to, well, it's to express more clarity, but two, it's to eliminate the possibility of the MPRB owning a park, for instance, like the Commons, yet not maintaining. And Ms. Siegel, did you have any comments to give us on what you think ends up being uh, the difference as we read this with those changes. I just, we're kind of all rushing through this and sometimes it's hard to understand what might be the impact of uh, changes. Um, Madam Chair, thank you. Um, I, I have another important suggestion that is to add another comma. Um, so we get this exactly right. Uh, so uh, currently after it means those parks that are one are owned, comma, operated and maintained. And then there's the amendment comma from council member Fry. Then the second comma I would add is <coughs> or, or owned and maintained, comma. Yes. By the MPRB. Mm. Okay. Yes. And I think that that's uh, crystal clear. We could probably get by with just owned and maintained, but let's do it this way so we're crystal clear. Yes. So if Council Member Fry would add that to his motion. Yes, I, yes, I would. So just to repeat for clarity's yep. sake, it would be our owned, comma, operated and maintained, comma, or owned, delete, comma, and maintained, comma, by the NPR BRB. Wait, I just got lost when you said that, maybe. <laughs> so you have added a comma after the word maintained. Correct. It's deleting a deleting comma it. or owned, delete, comma and maintained add comma. Correct. So those three changes, I'm going to ask the park board to comment and then we do have council members in queue with questions and comments. Uh, council Ms. Miller. Chair Glidden, we are fine with that. Okay, thank you. Council member Gordon, and then we have council member Andrew Johnson. Council member Gordon. So I guess I'm a little bit confused about what the difference is between owned, operated and maintained and how that would exclude any that were owned and maintained um, since if they're owned, operated, and maintained, I don't know. So I, I, I'll just say, Councilmember Gordon, maybe we need an explanation, but some park buildings are leased so, in our neighborhood parks. Co correct. So it doesn't say that this would relate to anything that's leased. 
Then I guess it depends on because I, I see two two different classifications of parks. Classification one owned, operated, and maintained. Classification two owned and maintained. Dude. Am I wrong? Because if there's actually a third, because there is a comma after the word owned, that includes the commons because it's owned. So I think what we want to be really clear about is it's not just that you happen to own it. Um, if we want to avoid the commons, so That's are there two different groups of park we're referring to, and what's the difference? Chair Glidden and Councilmember Gordon, there are two. There are parks, and it isn't even parks in totality. It's more re related to recreation centers within the neighborhood parks. The majority of our recreation centers we own, operate, and maintain. We have two recreation centers at this time that we do not operate, that we own and maintain. We lease them out, Phelps and Brian Coyle. So, which is why they, they fall in the category of owned and maintained, not in the category of owned, operated, and maintained. Was there another question, Councilmember Gordon, or should I go on to the next? I think it makes sense. And so, so, so it's, we're just really clear that it has to be owned, operated, and maintained, or owned and maintained, and it can't be just owned? Correct. Yeah, right. Correct. Because if we, all, if we had owned uh, Council Member Gordon, then it would raise questions about the downtown commons, actually. Because we own downtown commons, we're leasing it to you. Right. So that would actually bring in the issue of downtown commons. Which maybe raise a question, maybe we just need to insert some language saying that this does not include. So anyway, maybe I'll just add that. It might, it's, especially since commas were called out as being so vitally important. You could also say um, it's owned, operated and maintained, or owned and maintained. So That's what it, Council Member Gordon, that's what it now says. And actually, we could get by with just owned and maintained, but we can have the two categories, so it's crystal clear that those two categories are covered. Yeah, that's it, it, there's an and in either definition, so it has to be owned, operated, and maintained, or owned and maintained. Okay, um, Council Member Andrew Johnson. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I've been waiting for this moment uh, to argue about the Oxford comma for probably my whole life. <laughs> I think we can just solve this issue because as a computer programmer, for a computer programmer, I see exactly what Council Member Gordon is talking about. I think we just need a comma after the word operated so that you have two sets, owned, operated, and maintained, or owned and maintained. That would be my recommendation is that we just throw that in there. I think logically it makes more sense. Otherwise, you know, the language that Council Member Fry introduced helps. I think we could go uh, and just clear this up right there. but. Madam Chair, if I might interject, then we would need to add a semicolon. So I would leave it without the extra comma. <laughs> I, th I think we've dealt with this maybe long enough. All right. Um, Councilmember Palmasano. Chair Glidden, um, I am concerned that when we add Andrew Johnson's piece to the mix that we introduce the idea of regional parks again. Okay. He hasn't made a motion, I'll just be clear on that. Okay. And he can't yet because we are 3D. So, okay. So we are back to Councilmember Fry has a motion before us and you have three grammatical changes uh, which have been described. So um, any further discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all in approval, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That item is approved. Next we have Councilmember Gordon. Thank you very much, and um, this is back to the main motion. And I don't have any amendments. I just wanted to speak to it a little bit. Thank you, sir. Um, and the, the, I guess I appreciate um, where we are. It, this is maybe ideal timing, and I wasn't concerned we'd be here. I was also comfortable with moving forward with a referendum for the parks. I wasn't um, necessarily bought into the idea that we had to solve the street funding gap at the same time we solved the parks funding gap. but. I know that what I kept telling everybody is if you could bring all the parties together united with one solution, um, I, I would um, greatly appreciate that. And it seems like that's what's happened. So it's pretty hard for me to stand outside of it. Um, for a long time, I've wanted to make sure that we had adequate funding for the parks. I was very concerned about um, uh, past history of things that council had done to the parks to prevent them from going forward with referendums, promises that weren't 
kept that weren't really recorded well, weren't codified well, and there's been this tension and these difficulties for years since I've been on the council. And hopefully this is a path forward. I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about some of the provisions in the ordinance um, that actually, the one that says the, the, um, the, the park board can't go out for a referendum unless we take three years of underfunding them again. So it feels like the independence of the park board is a little bit, um, and it, it, maybe we should quit calling it fully independent because we seem to be a little bit, have a codependent relationship maybe. I'm not quite sure what to call that, but interdependent. But anyway, I'm concerned about that. Um, hopefully the council, this council or future councils aren't going to say we have a financial emergency so big that we can't, we have to adjust this and change it. Um, and I appreciate that. Um, so I, I will be supporting um, the amendment, but I'm re supporting with some reservations and some that I already alluded to. I also don't really like operating like this so far outside of the regular budget process. I understand um, <clears throat> how the timing has worked. And I, I understand how um, the power of the concern about the referendum has really um, called us to come forward now and move forward with this and why maybe people don't want to have to go forward and spend the whole summer working on this, the referendum idea either. But I'm also concerned because of some of the testimony that we heard. I really appreciate that the, um, the park board um, president came up and spoke a little bit in addressing some of those things. Um, I know from my chair where I sit, that um, institutional racism can be baked very deeply into organizations and into institutions like our city government. As I'm hearing concerns about what's gone on with the park board in terms of hiring, promotions, those kinds of things, I was curious about what an in-depth study of the city government would reveal on those fronts. I know it's something that we're trying to wrestle with now and, and we over here are starting now an implicit bias training for all hiring managers. Um, we have, we're finally, I would say, after pushing for several years on this, we're starting a series of workshops and classes and we're trying to look into that and find out what has been leading us to some of the disparities that we see in our own workforce here. Um, it also sounds like the uh, park board is working on some of those issues in some different ways. I heard a racial equity training that was going on there um, and it, it occurred to me especially if we're working together more, that maybe we could um, help one another. I don't think that um, I want to direct our HR staff or the city coordinator's office necessarily to jump in with both feet and say, can we review what you're doing and see if we can help you or invite you to come in and help us. But um, I really want to know that we're going to be doing that. And I really want to know that you're going to respond to the, uh, uh, the, the law center's letter and, and we're going to see that. So I appreciated hearing that. Um, and it's something I think we have to um, be watching. I don't know that it rises to the level where I think we should s s postpone or delay this, understanding how far we've come and the timing that's involved in all of that. But it's a big concern that I have. And um, I was moved by some of the testimony that, that I heard today and um, gave me pause. Um, so I wanted to note that at least in my comments. Council Member Bender. Thank you, Madam Chair. I also wanted to speak to the main motion. Um, I'd like to add myself as an author, uh, something that I talked about with the two lead authors on in a show of my very strong support for this agreement. Um, I think this is a really important moment in this council. Uh, this is a council that has been together for a couple of years now with Mayor Hodges in office. And you know we've had some pretty public debates. We've had divided votes. And I think that this shows that we will come together when we need to, to do really great things for our city. And I think that everyone's involvement in this conversation has made it better. Um, I think it's drawn on the talents and skills and strengths of all of our policymakers in the city. And I think it's a really hopeful moment for Minneapolis. Um, this final agreement addresses all of the concerns that I had raised when we first started talking about this, many of which I had heard from my constituents. Uh, I'm really happy that this ordinance commits to funding both parks and streets. That wasn't necessary, but I think it's the right policy decision for us to make and the responsible one. Our streets, um, you know, they're, it's not the same as our parks, certainly not, but they are such important investments in our neighborhoods. And it is an opportunity to build the city of the future. You know, when we reconstruct and resurface streets, we often add critical safety improvements for pedestrians. We add bicycle facilities. And so this is an investment in the future transportation of system of our city. It's an investment in the 25% of land that is our public right of way. 
that we directly control and that we get to make better for everyone who lives in our city. And I think it was really important and I'm very thankful for the leadership of Councilmember Reich and Councilmember Palmasano, the chair and vice chair of, of our Transportation and Public Works Committee, um, for bringing that forward so quickly. I'm very happy that the ordinance includes specific identified funding sources um, and a process that we can use to amend uh, anything that might change in the future. And we really got into the weeds and Mr. Ruff just jumped in on his third day or first day in, in his new role and has really helped us find some creative funding mechanisms. Uh, I think it is really important to have that level of transparency and particularly for us to understand the levy increases that we are looking at to fully fund this program. Um, I really appreciated, this is again kind of a detail of the funding, but um, I was concerned about not having a one-time large increase in our levy uh, coming from a ward where that may impact my taxpayers. Um, and so I'm appreciative of the thought that went into structuring this so that we're relying on cash mm -hmm. in the early years for bonding for the farther out years and we're having an incremental levy increase. Again, I think that just shows uh, great financial planning and I think it's um, wonderful that it's part of our explicit commitment now. Um, and I think it's uh, probably the best part of this is our explicit commit commitment to racial equity. And this is something where I think the Park Board is leading. Uh, and I really think that you're doing great work. I um, know there's always room for improvement, but I think that's something that we're, we're all coming together and really figuring out how we can um, set up the processes we need to make sure that we're investing in communities of color and low-income communities in the city uh, for assets that really make a huge difference in people's lives. Um, so all that to say thank you very much uh, to Council President Johnson and Council Member Goodman. Uh, who, again, who took the initiative and the leadership on this to Council Member Quincy and Council Vice President Glidden, who, from the Ways and Means perspective, really got into these budget details. I really appreciate Mayor Hodge's leadership on ensuring that this had uh, financial, um, the financial details were there, that we were being as responsible as possible, and again, her commitment to the racial equity piece um, that has been so important in her administration. Uh, and so that's all I have to say. Thank you. Council Member Connell. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I have a procedural question just because we have, and, and then I also have a question for the parks leadership. So um, there was questions that I was getting through social media and, and on, online about the, um, the public's access to amendments. And so if we could uh, just have maybe the, the uh, clerks um, help us understand the amendments. Once, once folks are ready to present an amendment, are um, is there a, a rule about us sharing those amendments with the public? Uh, because there was concerns that some people were participating in the public hearing, having information to, having access to information that other folks didn't have access to. So if you could just help explain um, the amendment process in terms of, um, do we just walk them onto the floor all the time? Is there a rule about us sharing them with the public in an equitable way? Or what is the, the public's uh, access uh, and guarantee to, to having um, this information. Uh, Madam Vice President, Councilmember Cano, and I will defer to the city attorney on questions and involving legal procedure uh, to access to the council's procedure. But in general, from a procedural standpoint, uh, once the matter is before the body, so after a motion has been made and the matter that was publicized on the posted agenda, which provides general public uh, notice of the subject matter that's to be discussed, council members are of course free to bring forward amendments to perfect that uh, proposal or to amend it, modify it in some way so that it can be further discussed uh, for the basis of a recommendation to the full city council. The open meeting law in the state of Minnesota requires that we provide at least one copy of any material that is distributed at the meeting. And so we, as you know, do that here at the clerk's station. We try and provide at least one and multiple copies that the public can come take. Uh, as soon as the meeting is over, generally within an hour, although it depends on the nature of the meeting and how long we go, uh, the clerk's office has a goal of posting a marked agenda which shows all the actions taken and if there are amendments or other substantive documents or details that have been added into the base um, action that's been taken, those are also uploaded with the agenda and the materials that are added so that the public who couldn't be in attendance have access to that as well. 
So um, from a general procedural matter, that's the, the flow of items is the introduction of business. A motion is made to put that in front of the body. The body then is open to debate and discussion. During that process, the normal perfection manner of bringing forward amendments is, is available to all the members of the committee or the council at that time. They bring those forward for discussion. They can be approved or, or not approved as they are. Um, those copies are available here at the dais uh, from the clerk. And then after action, we then upload all of that back to the agenda so that the public who is monitoring remotely has access to that material as well. And of course, because we're broadcasting uh, in real time, um, you've seen that here today, of course, uh, as amendments are offered, they're often read out loud. Um, and uh, if there is uh, misunderstanding or difficulty understanding that, oftentimes the clerk or the attorney or the member offering amendment will read it again and just make sure that before we vote, of course, there's clarity from all members who are participating on what the actual wording is that's being uh, acted upon before that vote's taken. I hope that answers the procedural aspects. If the city attorney has other legal aspects to add, of course, I would defer to her. Madam Chair and uh, Council Member Cano, I think that accurately sets out uh, any legal requirements as well as process. Thank you. And then in terms of the public hearing, um, if folks didn't know that the public hearing had been extended or was open um, until yesterday when we released our newsletter, which talked about the, the public hearing. So I'm curious to know how we as a city communicate to the public about uh, our public hearing process, especially since we had a public hearing before, it stayed open, it remained open, but it seems like people didn't really um, know that was happening. So I'm just curious to know, how do we announce to the public and to our residents and our constituents that public hearings are happening? Uh, Madam Vice President, Council Member Cano, uh, under the law, when we're conducting a public hearing uh, that's required <coughs> under the statutes, of course, we do a legal publication, and that involves uh, multiple pieces. We publish in the city's officially designated paper finance and commerce, <clears throat> and they print on <clears throat> excuse me, twice a week, Tuesdays and Saturdays. Uh, and that's the fulfillment of the legal obligation. But in addition to that legal publication, we also post to the council's website um, under notices. It's also posted on our agendas. Uh, for example, uh, on the transportation and public works agendas, there's a heading at the bottom that says upcoming and upcoming public hearings or other meetings are often posted there as an additional but not legally required manner of providing that information. The notice for the public hearing on this matter was published in the paper prior to the public hearing beginning at the last council cycle and immediately after that meeting, as I just mentioned, um, the clerks within the hour after adjourning posted a marked agenda which shows what action was taken and that marked agenda noticed that the meeting or the public hearing was continued to this date. So it would have said action taken, po hearing postponed, to April 27th. And then the agenda that was published for this meeting, and our agendas are typically posted the day before the meeting, usually 24 hours, but at least a day before the actual meeting, the clerk's office will publish and post those agendas. And on that agenda, it does say uh, hearing continued from the date before. So it's a way of tying that together. When we first publish notice and when we publish the agenda, and then if action is taken to continue or postpone that hearing to another date, we put that on the marked agenda. And then on the agenda for that meeting, we also say postponed from this meeting in order from the public's perspective to make that connection. Do you know if currently we have a practice to advertise our public hearings on social media? on the city's social media platforms? We don't have a policy per se, Madam Vice President. There are times when our communications department, because of a significant issue, will work with them to post that because the city does have not only a website, but a Facebook page and a Twitter account. And there are um, often larger occasions um, such as this issue. And I know, for example, on Monday night after the Ways and Means acted, one of the things the staff did Tuesday was work to make sure that because this was a continued public hearing and because it was such a significant issue, um, we worked with communications as soon as the final draft of the substitute ordinance was completed to put that notice out through the communications department through the various um, channels that they have. So that was done in this instance, but we don't have a policy that says for every single public hearing, uh, we're going to use our social media accounts to publish that. Thank you. My next questions are for the park uh, leaders here. So um, my staff was able to attend um, the meeting where you unveiled the uh, criteria-based system for MPRB capital and rehabilitation project scheduling, and it's the um, 
it's the framework that I believe staff presented to the to the board around um, racially concentrated of poverty, um, these community characteristics, uh, in addition to park characteristics that would lead to uh, major rehab and capital uh, project selection. It's my understanding that this report was uh, not adopted that day by the board, uh, and I would love to hear more about what is the plan uh, to, to codify and to institutionalize this plan, because um, I know that this plan is really important to our community when it comes to racial equity investments, and I would like to just understand more about what the process is for that. Chair Glidden, Council Member Cano, um, we presented it for the first time last Wednesday to our board. Um, it's a lot of information, a lot of data. We are having a, we uh, gave our board members an opportunity to ask questions on the information we provided to them, and we are actually processing those questions right now. We are going to have another discussion item next Wednesday on May 4th at our board meeting on this very item as well. Um, I also requested of the board and the board directed me to develop an ordinance based on uh, using this criteria. Uh, and I'm not gonna do it yet, however, until I get the feedback from the board next Wednesday, but we are beginning the work on an ordinance. My intent and hope is that I will be able to actually bring the ordinance forward to the board for a uh, first reading at one of our meetings in June, have a public hearing and a second reading of that. So um, I don't know which meeting in June will do it. It will be de dependent on what questions and issues come up um, on the 4th, but our goal is to bring it forward for codification in an ordinance in June. That actually leads to my second question. And so there was language in our, um, I believe in the ordinance or the resolution that talks about the concurrent park plan ordinance. So will there be then two ordinances on your end, one that mirrors ours and is identical to ours, and then the one that you just mentioned? Correct. Um, Chair Glidden and Council Member Kano, we will actually be preparing two ordinances. The ordinance relative, assuming that City Council passes this ordinance before you today and on Friday at the City Council meeting, we are we're actually prepared to take the port park portion of this ordinance, add it to our agenda that will be posted on fr this Friday for our board for first reading on May 4th, then on May 18th, a public hearing and second reading of that ordinance at our uh, May 18th board meeting. And then the ordinance regarding the criteria will come later in June. Thank you. Um, lastly, I just want to thank the, the community for, for coming out today to participate in this public hearing. I know that a lot of folks have been working on this racial equity issue for years, as I mentioned. Um, I'm very happy and thankful to be able to represent Ninth Ward residents who consistently and firmly stand up for this vision uh, to improve our city, uh, to make sure that um, the folks who have been uh, often ignored or, or don't have access to ways to participate in these conversations have a voice and have a presence. Um, I was really glad to be able to work with uh, Commissioner, Park Board Commissioner Brad Bourne on this issue. was very thankful to all the communications I was getting from uh, Superintendent Jay Miller as well as Mark Andrew, and um, really um, you know, felt good about working with uh, Councilmember Glidden and uh, Councilmember Bender and uh, Councilmember Goodman on this um, effort because it is one of the most significant uh, funding decisions that we will be making uh, within our four-year term as a, as a council body. And um, I can't thank enough um, the community members who really were able to bring this vision forward of ensuring that our community parks are funded in a racially uh, equitable manner that will be sustainable and um, will help lead our city into a much different um, future and an experience for our kids when it comes to using parks and access to green space. And the work, I think, um, remains. Uh, I don't think we're done here today. Uh, the implementation is go going to be key. Uh, continued partnership is going to be key. So having more uh, engagement from our partners on this is going to be important to ensure that we continue to drive um, this work and um, produce the outcomes that our, that our residents and our voters want to see. Thank you. Thank you. I am going to turn the chair over to Council President Johnson. I have a, just my apology, I have a child I have to pick up from school and I, who is ill and uh, the nurse just called me, which is why I stepped out and I can't reach my husband. So um, I'm going to turn this over. Council Member Warsame. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, I just want to speak to the main motion. Would you go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to speak in favor of the motion as well as the amendment, the Johnson Amendment. And for me, this is a culmination of two years of work. 
Uh, when I came into office in January 2014, um, we started working, my office started working with the Park Board, and we wanted to bring resources and programs to our neighborhood parks. And I'm very glad that we have made this agreement with the Park Board, and I would like to thank um, Council President Johnson, Council Member Goodman, and Council Member Palmasano, who some people have forgot, was also part of the negotiation team. So I'd like to thank them, and also I'd like to thank uh, the Chair of Ways and Means for um, bringing this agreement and um, fully funding our park system. And today, why I'm supporting this and why the Sixth Ward is very excited is the fact that you know we will get you know necessary investment for Curry Park as well as the Brian Coyle Rec Center in Cedar Riverside. We will also fund PV Park in Ventura Village, and as well as the Phillips Pool in Ventura Village neighborhood, and Matthews Park in Seward. And these parks are very important to me and to my constituents. For example, the Phillips Pool has been a project I've been working on for two years, and, and I'm very glad that now we will be able to uh, get it done. And I'm glad that, you know, young people of color will learn how to swim in the city of lakes and that immigrant women uh, will be able to learn how to swim uh, using culturally appropriate programming. I'm glad that, uh, you know, our seniors will be able to walk around in, in Curry Park and our children will be able to play basketball and soccer in these parks. And without these parks, we would not have... Uh, a healthy living in the concrete jungles that, that we live in in Cedar Riverside and in Seward and in Phillips. Um, people talk about uh, co uh, areas of concentration of poverty. People talk about people of color. People, people have mentioned equity and racial equity. But this is, in, in the time I've been in the council, this is the biggest investment that we have made in terms of uh, addressing the racial equity gap. This is the biggest investment we have made. This, is, this makes sense to everybody, and I'm fully supportive of it. Um, I'm also supporting the, this historic agreement. For us, this is a big deal, that, that we can make such an agreement with the park board, that we can be adults, that we can come together uh, in, uh, in, in a table and, and, and hash out our differences. And I think this sends a good message, a message of collaboration, a message of consensus building in our city. Um, again, I would like to also thank uh, Superintendent Jane Miller. You know, I've met Jane Miller numerous times, even before this negotiation. We, we, we sit on the uh, PV Park uh, team that, that, that's looking at uh, the investment in PV Park. She's always been attentive. She's always been supportive. You know, I've had a young man from Cedar Riverside who wants to join the police force, and he wanted to join the Park Board Police. He applied. He didn't get in because he was he's only 18, and he, you know, he didn't meet the criteria. I called Jane Miller, and she set up a meeting between him and the Park Board Police Chief. So I can attest, you know, that Jane Miller has been very attentive with regards to uh, our office and with regards to making sure that any concern that we bring to her office is addressed. And I would like to uh, thank her and her team. And let's support this and let's put our money where, where our mouth is. And, and make sure that we reduce the equity gap by, by making such investments as we're doing today. Thank you. Councilmember Fry. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, about a month ago, I told the story about how I initially came to the Twin Cities, which was running the Twin Cities Marathon. And about a mile, the 10 mile mark, Scott DeFilippis turned to me and said, Man, this is a beautiful park system. Now, what he didn't say was, there's a 20 year gap that we certainly need to fill and we need to allocate about $10 million per year. And so I never knew that I was going to be deal dealing with this intricacy of, of details down the road, but nonetheless, we're confronted with it. Um, and I, uh, I first want to, uh, to thank those that initially brought this forward and negotiated a whole lot of the agreement. Uh, Council President, Council Member Goodman, uh, uh, Paul Masana, you've done a tremendous job. Um, and it really takes a lot of guts to take the reins from the beginning to avoid what would have been a blunt instrument being the referendum, but we appreciate it. Uh, secondly, uh, you know, while I certainly uh, would have voted for um, uh, an additional all allocation for street funding in the normal budgetary process, I think it, it, it is helpful to get it all done. 
Um, and the fact that we're all coming together at once with this really significant proposal, I think, makes a lot of sense. And, and the, the complexity of the issue is not to be understated. I mean, we're using available funds, a levy increase. We've got uh, having issuing debt. Uh, we've got additional funds that will offset the levy. Uh, we've got sales taxes and fees. And um, it, this is complex, but in the end, I think it works brilliantly. Um, I would also like to be added as an author. Um, uh, and I'm very proud to be uh, part of this momentous occasion and hopefully a, a relationship that is built for the very long term. Councilmember Andrew Johnson. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, I'd also like to be added as an author, and I want to thank both you and uh, Councilmember Goodman and Palmisano and Quincy and the mayor and all the park board members and the Parks Foundation and all the individuals that uh, help bring this forward. I think it what we're seeing today is uh, an example, especially to us newer members, of leadership and working hard to get uh, something huge done, historic done. When I took office, the gap in both parks and roads was kind of this looming thing over us, and I think we all knew about it. They've been building for quite a long time, and I don't know uh, that any of us really saw exactly how it was going to get resolved. And it's uh, such a momentous. I know it's three and a half hours into the meeting, so you're kind of at a loss for words. It's almost hard to be excited uh, that long into a meeting, but it is, it is so momentous, uh, this work that has gone on. I'm so proud of uh, all of those who brought it for us. And, uh, it, it, when Council Member Goodman told me about it, it literally brought tears to my eyes because I see the need in our neighborhood, uh, in our neighborhoods, our community across our city, and this is something that everybody, every child, every person in the city can truly enjoy, take advantage of. It brings people together. It uh, allows, no matter what background or your socioeconomic status, uh, you to be out in the fresh air playing, being active, uh, meeting others, connecting with them is just so incredible. And then let's not forget the roads piece too, to see our pavement quality index, uh, pavement condition index turn around and uh, have our roads be uh, an example for the rest of the state of good high quality infrastructure. So I'm so proud. Thank you so much for all your work on this. Council Member Warsami. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. As you know, I'm quite shy, so but you can add me as a co-author as well to this. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? If not, let's take a vote then on the amendments. My amendments. Uh, any further discussion? Amendments are before you. All in approval say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries then on the main motion as amended. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, clerk call the roll. Councilmember Gordon. Aye. Khan. Aye. Wright. Aye. Bender. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Yang. Is absent. Quincy. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 11 ayes. That uh, report is adopted. That item is adopted. Ordinance, excuse me. So, uh, Mr. Carl, help me um, tell me what's uh, the, the remainder of the agenda that's before us. And so, thank you all very much for joining us. And just um, taking care of our main item. Just got a little business left. So. Madam President, just to um, clarify for my purposes on what I'm submitting forward to Council on Friday, we have the substitute ordinance that has been severally amended that was approved, and I'm going to assume that the Council also included in that approval the associated resolution, yes. which deals with the funding plan, and assuming that we have dealt with those matters, the only thing left on your agenda is the uh, consent agenda, which is the designation of a community action partnership with the Suburban <laughs> Hennepin as City of Minneapolis Community Action Agency. It's a resolution that was dealt with previously, and it's on the consent agenda. We simply need to uh, move approval of that consent agenda, pass that item forward to Council. I would move the consent agenda, the designation of Community Action Partnership of Hennep Suburban Hennepin as Minneapolis Community Action Agency. Any discussion on that item? Seeing none, all in approval say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. 
Then we have the reports of the committees. Um, I wonder if we could just briefly, if people have something that they want to bring up, um, let's go through quickly. And uh, if there's nothing that's super pressing, maybe we can skip going over the community development, regulatory services, anything, Council Member Goodman, she's gone. Who's Vice Chair, Council Member Fry? Community development and regulatory services. Anything on that agenda? No, nothing special. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, health, energy, and health, environment, and community engagement. Councilmember Gordon. It's all special, but we don't have to talk okay, about it now. Okay, good enough. <laughs> <laughs> IGR, uh, Council Vice President Glidden, uh, Councilmember Connor, you're the vice chair. Anything? Uh, we have uh, three items, uh, resolution supporting the United Black Legislative Agenda, uh, the Global Partnerships Minneapolis Sister Cities update, uh, saying that we will limit our partnerships to 12 sister cities, and then our federal, state, and local legislative updates. Okay. All right. Um, public Safety, Councilmember Yang, and who's the Vice Chair of Public Safety, Councilmember um, Gordon? There's, there's one minor item. Yep. Check. Um, it also was referred to Ways and Means. Okay. Um, Transportation Public Works, Councilmember Wright. Um, no highlights will stand for any particular inquiry. Okay. And ways and means, Councilmember Quincy. Madam President, I'm tempted to read all 22 items in detail. <laughs> but uh, I think uh, everybody Please understands don't. that these are yep. mostly contract amendments, uh, legal settlements, and uh, appointed position compensation plan changes. So uh, that happy to answer any other questions I'll point. Thank you. Zoning and planning, Councilmember Bender. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, of the agenda, two items had discussion through a public hearing, which one, one was at 2008 Bryant Avenue South, and the other is the Aladdis Tower Project. And I can answer questions of council members of those. Anybody have questions? Seeing none, um, we have dispensed with our agenda and a motion to adjourn to an order. So moved. So moved. Move. Okay. All in approval, say aye. 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 Opposed, that carries. See everybody on Friday. Aye.